Welcome to DCS L39 Albatross Startup Training. I'm Top Gun with the AKA War Dog Squadron. I'll be working today off of checklist version 1.2. And to start off, there's a couple of side notes. There are two versions of this aircraft in DCS. You've got the L39ZA and the L39C. And the C, I believe, is just the strictly unarmed trainer version of this aircraft. And the ZA is fully weapons capable and you can the the cockpits are laid out almost identically the the big difference you'll see immediately is on the C version this whole panel right here is missing because this is all dealing with weapons controls uh, the other note is on the checklist any text that you see in red text are items that are already set their correct position for uh, a startup so if you go to take off in a new aircraft you can skip over those steps but if you come back in to land and repair and have to st stop your engine and restart it when you go to start up the engine next time you'll definitely want to check over those steps the other part is there's text in this checklist that are that's blue and those are steps that are covering ADF setup for setting up the inner and outer NDV markers for the airfield that you're at or intending to land at, and also the RSBN channels. Um, those are not necessary for a standard startup, um, but I'm including those here just in case you want to see it. Uh, if you want to skip over those, uh, I'll let you know when we get to that point where we're starting those that, that module of the checklist, and I'll, I'll go ahead and put in kind of a, a tell later in the uh, video to denote when I'm finished with that section so people can fast forward through that section if they don't want to bother with uh, NDV setup. So let's go ahead and get started and let's close the canopy here. And this is a two-person aircraft. It is multi-crew capable, uh, which means two active players can be in the same aircraft at the same time. The since this is a trainer aircraft, the student is generally in the front cockpit, a trainer is in the back. Uh, if you're doing a startup, you'll generally be doing that from the front cockpit, which is position one. <coughs> uh, and if there is a, if there's no human player in cockpit two, the canopy will already be closed, so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, but if there is somebody back there, uh, he'll need to close his manually as well. So let's go ahead and lock the canopy, put this lever right here into the forward position, and let's get started. So let's do battery, forward to on, and all of these switches here are going to be forward to the on position uh, when we get to them. RDO, which controls the radio, and it takes upwards of one or two minutes to warm up, so I'd like to get that started early first so that it has sufficient time to warm up by the time we get to the radio. And let's go ahead and turn on the flight recorder which is left to the on position and this light will occasionally blink to note that it's working. Turn on the oxygen supply that's already in the on position so fully counterclockwise. Same thing for the diluter it's already in the aft on position. Internal lighting, if you want it, uh, there's actually two different ones. You've got the aft position for white lighting and forward position for red, and you've got an intensity knob here. I just put mine to white and just keep it low for daytime. Fuel shutoff lever, uh, fully forward and guarded. It's in that position by default, so you can skip it. Uh, parking brake, this is a little odd how they did this. Uh, I don't see any other aircraft in DCS that's like this, but there's two positions <coughs> to, this, to this lever. Forward is the parking brake position and aft is the emergency brake position. And as we push this forward into the parking brake position, you'll see this kind of like a butterfly valve kind of close over it. So when we go to disengage a parking brake later, this will come into play. Go ahead and set your minimum radar altitude. That's this right here. And you're 
looking at this bug on the dial face. Uh, hydraulic emergency levers forward. There's four of them. You've got landing gear, flaps, ram air, turbine, and main and emergency hydraulic systems interconnect. All of those, all four of those should be in the forward position, which they are by default. Let's go ahead and switch the engine switch forward to on. And external lighting should already be set to 100% and we'll set it to the forward position for flicker. Let's go ahead and turn on the APU, which they call turbo. But flip the cover up and momentary press on that. And I've got my external volume set pretty low, so it'll be kind of hard to hear. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn on inverter 2, which gives power to the radio. And this aircraft, like a lot of others in DCS, is not capable of setting a frequency manually. You only have a set of presets, which are set up in the mission editor. Uh, I've got mine set up to uh, ATC for this airfield on channel 1. So let's contact ATC for startup clearance. So do backslash to bring up your comms menu, and then F5 for ATC. F1 for your airfield and F3 for startup. Krasnodar, Springfield, 1-1, one, one. request startup. Springfield, 1-1, one, one. Krasnodar, clear for startup. So let's go ahead and uncover the engine start button. And give it a good press for about two or three seconds. And once you see the needles jump, go ahead and open up your throttle with Right Alt Home. And if you see the engine kind of stall at like 20 to 25 percent, you may have to boost up the throttle just a hair to kick it off. Uh, but usually that's not necessary. So once the engine is stabilized, let's go ahead and turn on the main and the emergency generators. And also inverter also forward to on. And then we can go ahead and do the rest of these. So AM, AGM, GMK, AOA heater, arms, which is the weapons. Drop tanks, that's how it's labeled on, this, on the panel anyways, actually refers to the wing tip tanks. So if you've got enough fuel set in the mission editor that those are actually full of fuel you'll want to go ahead and turn those on when they're empty you want to go ahead and turn that switch off let's finish with the rest of these so RSBN and the next two you can actually leave off these are for emergency purposes You've got the emergency RSBN and IFF but we can go ahead with the rest which is de-icing signal map RV and SDU And at this point, we can go ahead and pressurize the cockpit. So take the ECS pressurization valve and go ahead and put that all the way to the forward position. And just my preference, but I like to turn on the power to the signal flare uh, system just in case I need it for some reason. So that's up to the on position. And go ahead and put the flaps into takeoff, which is the middle button. <clears throat> now at this point we're doing ADF setup for the inner and outer NDB markers and I'll switch to F10 real quick. So in F10 if you click on an airfield you can bring up the data for that field. So it has a whole bunch of information so like the elevation of the field, the runway length, its latitude, longitude, coordinates. But what you're looking for here is if you want to do this stuff for the ADF you've got the outer NDB channels and inner NDB channels. And then you also have for the RSBN system, you've got RSBN and PRMG, basically the Russian version of ILS. 
So those are the pieces that you're looking for. So if you don't see any of this, you don't even need to bother with the ADF stuff because it's not going to do you any good. But if you want uh, to do ADF for outer inner NDVs, if it has this information listed, then you can go ahead and proceed. Uh, same thing with RSBN and uh, PRMG. If it has it, great. You can go ahead and set the radios to that. And uh, we'll cover that in a minute. Uh, for those of you who don't want to uh, do the uh, setups for the ADFs and RSBNs, you can go ahead and fast forward. When I'm done with that section, I'll go ahead and switch. To, I'll switch to the FT, F2 view like this. And that'll be your uh, notice that I'm done with that segment. So you can stop fast forwarding and continue on with the remainder of the checklist. So let's go ahead and turn on the ADF system. And it's going to be a little noisy. I've cranked down the helmet volume, but you'll still hear static hiss once we start doing this. And set the ADF function to antenna, ANT. And what we want to do is we want to set the right rotary to the uh, outer NDB. So we want to set this one, I'm at Craft Store Center, so I've got to set it to 625. So the bottom of the rotary is the hundreds. And the window is the tens. And then the inner knob is the ones. And once you've got the station dialed in, you'll no longer hear static and you'll hit them hear the Morse code for the station. So again, the bottom of this dial right here is for the hundreds. You actually have to click on the window right here, right and left click on the window to do the tens and then the knob is the ones. So that's the outer NDB. So let's go ahead and change the mode back to CAUT. And we'll go ahead and switch to the other NDV channel, which is this right here. We'll switch it to the right. And let's go ahead and switch the ADF mode back to antenna, AMT. And now we have to set the left rotary to the inner. So in our case, it's 303. So again, we've got the outer ring here for the hundreds, the inner ring set to zero, and the inside one for the ones set over to the three. Now we got that set, put the mode back to CAUT. And we can put the NDB mode back to the left position. At this point we can go ahead and turn that system off. So ADF to off and the ADF mode to off. So now we're dealing with the RSBN. So we've got a, uh, for Craft Star Center, the navigation frequency is 40. And unfortunately, there's no left clicking to get to loop back around to the high end of the dial. So you just have to do a lot of clicking. And the landing is frequency 38. Now that we've got those set, we can put the ADF back to CAUT, and we're pretty much done with this setting. Uh, we'll go ahead and get to the magnetic deviation here in just a second, but let me switch to F2 so folks can see that we're done with ADF setup. Now for next couple of steps, you've got uh, magnetic compass should be set. It's set by default already into the left position here. Zoom in on. But it, the other one that is also set by default typically is this magnetic uh, latitude selector. Uh, 
it's already set to the appropriate uh, heading. However, if you fly to another airfield and go to take off again, you want to make sure that this latitude matches the airfield, the latitude of at your current airfield. So, if your new airfield is 41, say for example, you'll need to rotate this back to 41 so that it matches up. But it should be set by default uh, if you're spawning into a new aircraft. Alright, so at this point we can go ahead and turn on the main and standby pitot tube heaters. And that long tone that you heard earlier was the radar altimeter telling us that it was done going through its test. So to reset it, you can rotate this all the way to zero until this light goes out. And then you can go ahead and set the system to whatever minimum altitude you want. Go ahead and set our de-icing switch to the middle position for automatic. And we can go ahead and switch our navigation lights to fixed steady to let others know around us that we're done and ready to taxi. And <coughs> turn on our taxi light and put this switch to the aft position. Now at this point we're pretty much ready to taxi so you can contact ATC but we need to turn off the parking brake. So let's get back to this weird butterfly valve here. So the forward position is parking, the rear position is emergency, the middle is where neither is engaged and that's where you need it to be. <coughs> so we need to keep an eye on this valve right here as we move this lever back. And we basically want to keep moving this lever until this stops moving. So once that's stopped, at that point the parking brake is no longer engaged and the emergency brake is not engaged. You know, so you want that happy medium in the middle there. But once the parking brake is off, at that point you're good to contact ATC to get taxi clearance. Uh, if you need to, you can adjust your uh, altimeter for local barometric pressure by using the lower left knob here. Uh, but that's pretty much it at that point. You're good to go. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Hope this has been helpful. Thank you.